Do you want to go thrift store picking? We got with Gil Daddy oh and Gil God. Mama. <laughs> What's up guys? Uh, I'm doing another video today on this rainy day, but um, we're going to go out, like always, and find a few things. So how has everybody's week been? I hope everyone is making lots and lots of money, because that's what we try to do, right? Yes, that is what we try to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to get back into the groove, doing some eBay, um, now that uh, we got our products sent off to Amazon. Um, for those of you that don't know, when I on the last video when I said we've been really busy, it's because um, we actually had our own product made in China and uh, got a whole bunch of it. What? Look at that guy over there. I look over and he's driving like this with his chin sitting on his steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Not too long ago, we seen a guy brushing his teeth while we were driving on the freeway. <laughs> it's like, wow, uh, multitasking, you know. Anyways, we did uh, have our own product made, um, branded it, came up with our own logo, brand, everything. And uh, no, I'm not going to tell you what it is, because I know all you guys will just go out there and copy me and do the exact same thing. So, this isn't ASM, guys. Sorry, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but the idea is pretty simple and it, it, it's the same for everything there's millions of products out there if you guys haven't looked into it I suggest you check it out I will keep you guys posted on how we do with it and um, that's really my goal I mean that's our goal you know is to get um, away Rich. from away from eBay not because eBay is bad or anything like that I, Amazon has its own headaches too I know but you know I, I need we need to grow as people we need to um, Advance. Keep advancing, yeah, keep making more money. Um, with eBay, it, it seems like there's kind of a cap with two people. Unless we hire somebody, because you only have so much time in a day. So the beautiful thing about that business, I'll let you guys know, is here's how it works. Uh, I had a product made, I had it shipped to me first, okay? The reason why we did that was so that we can check the quality of the product just to make sure we weren't getting some shit you know some some bad stuff that everybody's gonna leave us bad reviews and tell us your product sucks so I wanted to make sure that we are getting a good quality product and that people are gonna like it so once we got the product of course we inspected it um, we pat did our own packaging uh, it was pretty simple we just used uh, Polly's if you're in our Facebook group we put pictures on there and everybody wants to know what's in the bag <laughs> But we're not saying nothing. It's a dildo. Um, it's not a dildo. <laughs> it's hemorrhoid cream. And it's not hemorrhoid cream either. <laughs> Those are the two top conclusions at this point. That's the guessing. I guess it's a guessing <laughs> game. I don't know. Anyways, so we sent the product. We packaged it all up in boxes and sent it to Amazon FBA. Because people love Amazon FBA. Um, people will pay more money for items that are on Amazon FBA. If you guys are already selling on FBA then you guys already know that so now the beautiful thing about the business really is now that I have the product made once my inventory runs low all I have to do is get a hold of Ling Lang Lang in China you know they you just chat with them that was and, very non okay by the way I'm not being racist most of their names are Ling and Ying and Ning and Bing and, and, and sometimes Bob but <laughs> they're lying if their name is Bob. Or Susan. <laughs> or Susan. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you get a hold of your supplier, your manufacturer, and then you tell them, uh, hey, I need a thousand more. Or, hey, I need 500 more or whatever. And all you do is you give them the information for your pack packages so Amazon knows this company is for you. And you have more shipped in. So the beautiful thing about the whole business is that you can pretty much run an entire business making a lot, a lot of money, and all you have to do is monitor your inventory. That's it. You monitor your inventory and you're done. So that's our goal, guys. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take the work that's involved with eBay and getting into Amazon 
and still selling stuff, but streamlining the entire process so that we don't have to go pick, we don't have to clean, we don't have to picture, we don't have to do anything. We just get a nice product, put it on there, and sell it. But like I said on the Facebook group, I'm thinking that if we do go full time with Amazon, we could keep doing picking videos and do some giveaways with the stuff we pick, send out boxes to people. I think it'd be fun. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think uh, maybe a box of crap, right? Oh no, I'm sorry, box of shit. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Because that's what we always call it. Uh, it's, and the only reason why I call it that is because some people's shit is other people's treasure, and we all know that. So, most of the stuff I get, I don't want. You know, I, I don't even know why people want it, but if they pay money for it, then why am I asking why people are paying the money for it? So maybe that's an idea, guys. Because uh, eBay is still there, and you can make a full-time living on eBay. There's no doubt about it. I know because we've been doing it for two years, and you can make a very good living. Uh, we figured it out at one point, just doing eBay full-time. We figured out what kind of jobs me and her both have to have to, to to equal the same amount of income that we make on eBay, and we determined it was like fifty bucks an hour. I think it was fifty bucks an hour for one of us, but. For both of us, we both would have to make $25 an hour to make the same amount that um, we average out throughout the year on eBay. And, that, and that's doing it hardcore. Like I said, last month we haven't really been hitting it that hard because I've been focusing so hard on this Amazon product. And it, the, initially starting it up does take a little bit of work and time and research and, you know, a lot of that crap. So uh, eBay is still there and eBay will still make you a lot of money. And if you do eBay and Amazon, then you know you're you're expanding your your income even more. And we are still doing eBay right now. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be out picking and making a video for you guys if I wasn't. You could be giving it away. <laughs> I, I got to wait for my product to take off, uh, and it's not going to be live. To, I don't know for another week. So, so once once it's live, um, then I'm really going to see what the product's going to do. And um, I'm pretty confident with all the research I've done that we are going to do extremely well on just this one product. And if we fail and we don't make a lot of money on the product and it sells very slowly, then oh well. You know, you learn and then you move on and maybe we get a different product or whatever, you know. But I don't see that happening with this one, guys. So the Gale Money Group, uh, we have over a thousand members in there right now and it's pretty cool. There's a really great community. Most of the people are really laid back. Gil Mama doesn't kick people out like some of the other groups. I'm sure you know which ones I'm talking about. Anyways, she don't kick people out and get all Nazi in the group or whatever. Uh, anyways, the Facebook group is awesome, guys. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, we're all adults in there. At least I hope we are. And uh, if if there's a curse word now and then in the post, that Gil Mama is not going to go in and kick them out and boot it and delete the post and we're just not going to do that, guys. We're, we're, we're supposed to be adults here. We live in the real world. So please understand that when you go into really to any Facebook group, uh, if you have virgin ears, then it's pr you probably should stay out of them. When people post in there, they assume that they're talking to an adult who understands that if an F-bomb comes out or something, it's no big deal. As long as somebody's not abusing it. I mean, I don't want no F and 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 you know, I don't want none of that crap in there. But. So guys, um, definitely get up there on the Facebook group. We do have uh, live hangouts that we just started doing with some other pickers, and they're really cool. Um, and we just kind of hang out and BS a little bit. And um, really the reason why we're doing it is so that you guys will ask questions and things like that. If you have concerns or anything like that, you can ask questions and we'll, we'll respond live. And what's really nice about it is, you know the kind of shit we get, it's shit. <laughs> But um, we deal with a lot of tangible just things, trinkets, kitchen parts, electronics. You know, we love that kind of stuff, and we do well with it. And that's where our niche, I guess you could say, is. But some of the other guys in, um, some of the other pickers that are on these live hangouts, and we do them on Wednesdays in the evening time. Or Thursdays. So you could always check for the link um, on Gil Money's, uh, Gil Money Facebook page. I posted there. I also post it in uh, the website on gilmoney.com. So if you go to gilmoney.com, it'll be the very first thing up, up there on Wednesday. 
anyways, the, the nice thing about it is these other pickers, a lot of them do clothing, and I know there's a lot of people that watch our videos that do clothing too, even though we don't, um, but they can answer clothing questions, which is really cool, because we don't know a lot about clothing, because we did it for like a month and then hated it, so, um, but that's just personal preference. It doesn't mean you can't make money on clothing, so if you guys want to sell clothing, definitely get in there on the live hangout and check out um, uh, Goldfinger Picker and um, the, toad guy. the Toad Guy, I forget I'm your name, sorry. man. Oh, we'll mess them all up, I don't know. And Ronnie... Ronnie Hart. Ronnie Hart. Kevin Buccio. Kevin Buccio. I'm horrible with names. I know their faces. Anyways, just get on there, and if you have questions, ask these guys about the clothing and all that. If you have questions about junk and crap, ask us. If you have questions about scrapping, Scrapparella sometimes is on there too. I don't know if you guys know her channel, but she can answer questions about scrapping because we don't scrap. Not much anyways. And she does a lot of jewelry. Yeah. So guys, it's just a really uh, cool thing that we're doing and it's all about helping you guys. Now, if nobody asks questions, then we might start talking about movies or <laughs> women. Or baseball. Or strip clubs. Uh, we don't talk about strip clubs. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we may. Do I have cherries? No. I was eating cherries for breakfast this morning. Just make sure I didn't have cherries in my teeth. Cherries are good, okay? Mm. So I'm turning into the outlet now, guys. And because you know that's where we go first. Just got good deals. Man. What can I say? Do you want to build a snowman? Oh, I want to give a shout out to Matt Franich. <laughs> I don't know why I never gave you a shout out. Um, and he don't have a YouTube channel or nothing, but he's um, he's a guy that recognized us in a thrift store and we became friends. So, and the funny thing is now he's Ding! Gil Mama disappeared. Actually, my, my crap ran out of room, so I had to restart. Uh, anyways, Matt Franich, he may be moving into the house like across the street from me. So, um, so it's really cool, you know. Uh, you meet like minded people when. Um, you collaborate, you know, and which is awesome because then it keeps you going, kicks you in the ass and gets you going. And that's why the Facebook groups and things like that are really cool because um, you guys just can converse and it motivates you to keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Because I know if you guys are going full time or maybe doing a little on the side, I know you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. You always have those people who are like, well, why don't you get a real job? You know, and it's it. You're just kind of like you don't understand. You're just not in the right mindset. People are so. Oh, I sold something. Oh, cool. I sold that Vulcan gun. Remember the Vulcan gun, the Nerf gun, the thing that we bought on the other video. Just sold it. Anyways, um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, so anyways, yeah, you you know those people. It, they just don't. They don't get it because we're so programmed when we when we're growing up that you have to go out and you have to get a job and work for somebody to make a living. Get a job with good benefits. Get a good city job. I've heard that one a lot. Um, and the truth of the matter is, guys, you don't have to do that. You're so used to it and you're so babied that the idea of going full time and making your own money it scares the shit out of most people. That's that's the truth of the matter because they've never been off that bottle. But you really got to ask yourself a question. You really have to see, in, in this world we live in, it's all about selling. Selling, selling, selling. That's, that's it. It's selling. So you can choose to be one of the people that sells or you can be the person that works for somebody who sells. And if you really think about it, just think of any business out there I don't care. I mean, heating, air conditioning guy, they're selling something. They're selling services. Now, you could be the guy that works for the guy that sells the services, or you can be the guy that sells the services. It's really up to you. So that's why we, we do what we do, because I know it's completely possible, because once you're full-time doing this job, you'll make it, because you have to. You have to go out, and you have to buy, and you have to sell in order to survive. And it's the same motivation that gets you up in the morning, or maybe not you, but maybe somebody you know, but it's the same motivation that gets them up in the morning to go to their job. Why do they go to work when they don't want to? Well, because they got to get a paycheck. Uh, no different than what we do here. So anyways, I'm going on too long, guys. I need to get in the freaking outlet. Gil Mama's already out there, and they're going to open here in like 
five minutes. So I'll see you when we get out. See, Gil Daddy can be motivational too. Done with the outlet, and this is our haul for today. Oh, so you know the drill, guys. Okay, got a Sony five disc changer. It goes for about forty. And you plug it in, test it. It's hard to plug it into speakers, but usually we put a disc in these things and make sure that you can. Start. Yeah, the disc starts and it goes through the numbers and everything, and it works. So we got a Pioneer fifty disc changer that goes for about twenty five thirty. 25. Back in the day, that sucker was probably 200 bucks. <laughs> Nobody listens to CDs anymore, at least I don't. And a Technics receiver that goes for about 40. Oh my god. And it's heavy really heavy. Technics. You know, I think I'm mispronouncing that. A lot of people tell me it's techniques, but I don't care. It's money to me. <laughs> and we got bags, two trash bags full of Barbies and Bratz and Monster High dolls. My daughter's gonna love me. So, all the Barbies will get sold and all the Brats will get sold. The Barbies will go for about a buck a piece. The Brats will go for about 50 cents a piece. Somewhere in there, yeah. And the Monster Highs will go to my daughter. Yeah. So we probably got a good, I don't know, 40 bucks worth of Barbies and Brats dolls in there. More than that. More than that? Oh, we got two bags. Never mind. We probably got like 50, 60 dollars okay. in dolls. I got a Roto Zip that we don't know if it works, but... If it does work, it will go for anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks. Yeah, so it might be worth buying. See, a lot of times, just a little tip, guys, on items like these, when they don't have a battery or a charger, um, we'll go in and we'll buy the battery and the charger on eBay and then test it out. And if it works, we'll sell it with the battery and the charger. And if it doesn't work, we'll toss this and then sell the battery and charger back on eBay so you're not out any money. Presto and pressure. And if you are, cooker. you're only out five bucks or so. Presto, cook, presto pressure cooker. All right, and we got this presto pressure cooker. This is a small one. We got two of them. The small one, uh, it has oh, the rack shit. inside. I need to clean it up, of course. <laughs> uh, but it has everything. The rack the seals good. It goes for about 30, 35 bucks. Well, we got two converter boxes that we paid 10 bucks a piece for, and they will go for what? Same, 27, 28 bucks a piece. And then we got a bunch of media. Unless I put them on uh, Amazon. On Amazon, um, you can get around more. 40 bucks, 35, 40 bucks out of them. Media for Amazon. And I got a big pot there. Oh, yeah. Um, that one right there, that one doesn't really go for a whole lot. So we're probably going to keep it and use them for like tamales or something. Because I don't have a big pot like that. And we have this pot. Now this little one, I guess because of the brand, it does go for... Uh, about 30 bucks and the brand is uh, I always checked I don't know if you can see it either way it's like lice l-e-y-s-e <laughs> not lice like the crap in your hair <laughs> the crap in Gil Mama's hair <laughs> Nerf, uh, gun. Nerf gun again those go in lots um, if you if I was to put a value on just the gun by itself it's probably about eight nine bucks Lid for the big can. And a lid. And a Krups coffee pot. Um, some of these, we used to do a lot of these back in the day. Nowadays, we don't do too many unless they're valuable. But this is a Krups one. And I looked it up. It goes for about 20, 25 bucks. And you clean these by boiling some water. Really easy way. Boil some water and put some uh, dishwasher detergent in it. And once it's boiling, you pour it in these and let it sit for about an hour and everything just comes right off. These also go to Krups machines. These are big espresso machines. Um, one goes for about 15, the other one goes for about 25, and they're real high dollar espresso machines, but I don't like trying to fix them because they're all kind of broken if they're here. But always look for these. Usually I'll take a picture of the model number with the deal in my hand so I know what it goes to when I go to list it. Some Bissell parts. And those the, goes for what, about 30? 30. And then this little thing goes for what, 14, 15? 15 bucks for that, yeah. Some more media. This DVD set right oh. there went. It's brand new. It went. It goes for about 30, 35 bucks if on Amazon. If it's not a limited category, it. I don't think it is. Uh, and then all of these all came. We didn't pay ninety five cents a piece. These were by weight too. They just had price tags on. But um, I think the most valuable one there is like twenty five dollars. The rest are all. Uh, like 10, 11, 12 dollars a piece. And these are all pieces to a George Foreman rotisserie. We got the basket, the warming tray, the the spit rod, and the little 
these dudes. Yeah, this is the 6,000 model. Oh, and the door. I take the glass doors out of them because they don't sell super fast, but I always sell them. And this one here will go for around $20 for just the glass. Um, this rod here goes for about 25 and like I said, this is the big one. This is like the 6,000 model, so it's really long. Uh, but this goes for about 25 bucks. The basket goes for about 20, 25 bucks. The warming trays, they sometimes take a while to sell, but they're usually around 15 bucks or so. And then the um, skewers, oh. those things, those go for about 20, 25 bucks for all of them. And those sell super, super fast. I hope and, you plan and, on cleaning this, Gil Daddy. It's freaking disgusting. Yeah, I'll clean it. <laughs> I'll usually put the parts in some boiling water with some dish detergent, and the stuff comes right off, so no biggie. But that is our outlet haul, guys. So be on the lookout for all these types of items, and you will make money. All right, guys, so here is our receipt. Um, 6308 is exactly what we spent. You can see I had two of the converter boxes, paid $17.91 separately for those. The rest was just weight, which was $41.60 and $63.08. All right, guys, so Gail you know, Mama don't feel good today, so we're not going to go to any more thrift stores. She has stomach cramps. Maybe she's pregnant. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not pregnant, okay? I hope not. I'm done having kids. If I'm pregnant, you ain't done having kids. Uh, that's true. No, if you're pregnant and you're not done having kids, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta push that baby out. So, um, no, she's not pregnant. Oh, we're, we were in the outlet for about an hour and a half. Uh, they open at ten, and we're, it's eleven thirty now. Um, I just wanted to say that because I know that different outlets work different ways. Um, we, I know some outlets will bring stuff out like every hour or every two hours or something and people will stay there all day. We don't stay at the outlet all day. We never have, never will. Um, we go right in the morning, right when they open. And mainly because the way that our outlet works is they open up and they have, basically they put new stuff out in the morning before they open. And then the rest of the day they don't put anything new out. So there's really no point to stay all day. Which actually makes it better for us because then you're not sticking around somewhere all freaking day to get stuff. But on the other hand, you might make more money if you stick around all day to get stuff at some of those other outlets. The cool thing about being done so early is now it's only 11.30. We have all day to get all this shit listed. So it makes it really nice. You can pick and list. Unless we were going to more thrift stores and then we'd be out for another two hours, three hours or so. But I know I've said it in the past, but I'm going to say it again. Don't do that. Don't go out all day, every single day, and pick because then you're never going to list either that or you're going to be up all night listing. And if that's what you want to do, then cool. As long as you're getting the stuff listed, you're going to make money. So in order to make money in this business, you have to have a nice balance of both picking and listing. Because picking is fun. I really don't even see it as work, and I know you guys probably don't either. You love just going into thrift stores and going into outlets or yard sales and finding these treasures, and that's the fun part. So it's, it's really not even work to me. The work is the cleaning of the items, and she pictures them, and I list them. That's the work part. Now I wish I could train somebody to do all that stuff for me because then I could just go picking all day and then just drop the stuff off to them. That would be sweet. So you can see that lately I haven't really been getting many books anymore. When I first started doing um, some of the Amazon FBA, I started after books because that's what everybody always talks about is books. It's kind of like eBay and clothes. Everybody talks about clothes. With Amazon FBA it seems like everybody talks about books. Um, there is money to be made in books, especially if you have a good source, but I find it really boring. <laughs> it doesn't really stimulate my mind as much. I don't know. I, sometimes I can sit there for an hour scanning books and not find a book. And I, I think even if I was finding books, I'd still be bored just sitting there all day for whatever, an hour or two hours scanning. Beep, beep, beep. It's just boring. I, I don't know. Not. It's just not my thing. I. I just don't like doing it so and the whole reason why we do this for a living is because we enjoy what we do and if you're not enjoying what you're doing then you're 
you're wasting your time. That's the whole reason why you work for yourself is so that you can enjoy what you're doing. So if you're if you're out there and you're you're picking junk and you don't like it, then switch to something else. You know, uh, maybe you'll be happier selling clothes, or maybe you're a shoe person and you'd be happier selling shoes. Then sell shoes, or maybe you like playing with stuffed animals all the time. And if that's the case, then you should be a furry. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, you need to sell plush, okay? Because I know a lot of people like to sell plush. I don't. What I'm trying to say is pick something that you enjoy selling and run with it. So the point is just go with whatever you guys want to do to make money. Pick that as long as it makes you happy. And uh, the next important thing, of course, is that you are making money doing that. If it takes you 10,000 items, have it, to have 10,000 items on eBay to make $1,000 a month, then there's probably something wrong with your plan. Because it shouldn't take that many items to make $1,000 a month. And that's a lot of freaking work for $1,000 a month. Um, but anyways, guys, we have to go home. Um, make, make sure you check out the website if you guys want to browse through the videos and the recommended supplies and all that. Uh, at gillmoney.com, right here somewhere. And uh, definitely join our Facebook group at uh, just search Gill Money on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description too. And join our group. We'll take you in unless your picture is really ugly. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but uh, Gill Mama, go ahead. Okay, so right here on Gill Daddy's face is what we spent. And right here in between us somewhere will be about what we're selling for. That's it, guys. Happy day. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, guys. Don't party too much. <laughs>